Next problem. We're sticking in this section. Sum of all work equals change in kinetic energy. Sum of all the work equals change in kinetic energy. What type of work could I have? I like to think of three different types. Gravity, spring, force times distance. Okay, so here we've got a block that has a mass of 0.8 kilograms. It moves within the smooth vertical slot. It starts from rest when the attached spring, uh, sometimes these springs are attached to the block, sometimes the, the, the block goes free from the spring. <clears throat> if it starts from rest when the attached spring is in the unstretched position at A, determine the constant vertical force which must be applied to the cord so that the block attains a speed of 2.5 meters per second when it reaches B. All right. It's important to visualize and understand what the figure is, what's really happening in your problem. Sometimes the figures are more clear than others. This is an attached spring, and it's only one block. There's not a block A, block B. You see, block A is where it starts. B is where it ends, and this spring would, would still be attached to B. All right, so I would think, okay, I, I, I've got some some uh, mass that is changing heights. So I've got the work done by gravity, MGH1 minus H2. I do have a spring, so 1 half KX1 squared minus X2 squared. And be careful because in this method, the H, it's H1 minus H2. It's X1 squared minus X2 squared. Plus, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say force times distance, but could be like an integral F DS equals one half M V two squared minus V one squared right there. So there's my equation right there. Okay. So let's, let's break it up into bite test pieces. Let's think about the MGH first. All right. So my MGH block has a mass of eight gravity, 9.81 height one. Where does it start? Uh, uh, let, let's call that our zero ground, our height. It starts at zero. I would go ahead and write that zero right there to make sure that you get this negative correct. So it's zero minus 0.15. It ends at 0.15. All right, so there's the work done by gravity. So you can, you can see and look at that, but when... If you like to think about gravity as doing work to an object, gravity has done negative work to an object. I don't like, but anyway, that, that term is going to be negative. That's fine. Uh, plus one half K of 100. So here's X1 squared. So that is not the initial length of the spring. That's the initial stretch or compression. And I think it said it starts at the unstretched position. So it starts, it has no stretch or compression. So let me go ahead and put zero. And then it is being stretched by 0.15, right? If this moves up here, then my spring will have stretched by 0.15. Technically a stretch, is a positive delta x, a compression is a negative delta x, but we're squaring those, so it doesn't really matter, stretch or compression. All right, plus, all right, this force. It looks like we have a force right here. It looks like we have a, a cable that has some tension that's pulling it. It would be really difficult, and it is a constant force, determine the constant vertical force F. All right. It would be really difficult to find the FD if we, if we looked at the rope right there. But what if we look at the rope right here? Let's look at it over here and let's find its distance D that it moves, right? This goes up 0.15, but can you imagine that this doesn't go down 0.15? How can we find out where it goes? They give you a hint, and I'm definitely not going to give you that hint on the test. And I have given problems like this on the test, so you got to know, got to be able to calculate this. But if we could find the length of this portion 
of the rope where, when it starts and then compare it to the length of that portion of the rope when it ends, then wouldn't the difference be our distance D that we had to pull the rope? So this pink length would be 0.5. We just did 0 0.4, 0 0.3, square, square those, take the square root. Um, and then this blue rope would be uh, 0.3 by 0.25, and it would be 0 0.3905. 0.3905. And so I can do FD because it's a constant distance. I mean, it's a constant force and it's in the direction of the distance. Looking at those two, I've got to pull it point. What's the difference in those? 0.1095. I don't know the force. That's what I'm trying to find. 0.1095 right there equals one half. M V two squared. Let's see, it started from rest, so V one squared is zero. And then I, it actually tells us the final velocity, 2.5. 2.5 squared minus zero. And there we go. And my only unknown, not too bad, my only unknown is that force F, and this would be 43.9. Uh, I wasn't careful with my units. Let me look back. That K was Newtons per meter. This 0.15 was in meters. The height was in meters. The gravity was in meters. The mass was in kilograms. Uh, everything should work out as far as my units are concerned. All right. But what did I do? Let's step back and look up. I did this equation because I was in this section and I knew I needed to use that equation. But because of this right here, it, it told me it attains a final speed of 2.5. So I, I use that method to find the final velocity. And that's all it asked for. Okay. All right. So be thinking about which of these. Do you like sigma u equals delta t or do you like v plus t? V plus T plus non-conserved work equals V plus T. I prefer this concentration energy. All right. 